Hey guys, welcome to this rather short video on how to use this Substance Painter node group that I've just put up on Blender Market. Um, it's basically a uh, combination of the free PBR nodes that I've released um, on my website, uh, but more tailored towards directly working with Substance Painter. Uh, it has a bunch of extra features uh, thrown in, uh, which I'm going to run through now. Um, the first five inputs here are literally just for the maps. Um, I'll bring some of those in uh, in a moment. In fact, I've already got them in on a on a model, but we'll take a look at those in a moment. Um, then after that, you've got a bunch of modifiers for uh, adjusting those maps. You can adjust the strength of the normals. By default, it's set to the one, i.e. the perfect normal strength. Usually that will work fine, um, but I wanted to add in some control there. Um, by default, the ambient occlusion is at zero, uh, but you can uh, increase that as needed. You've then got controls for brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue, uh, which only affects the, the base color map, but that will affect both the dielectric and metallic shader that's within the uh, within the overall node group. Um, then you can adjust the roughness and metallic um, maps, uh, the, the influence they have over the, uh, the overall look. Um, then at the bottom here, you can choose a rim lighting color, with that I can demonstrate now actually. If I take this up to there, let's take the base color to let's make it a white color for ease. There we go. It's obviously looking quite blue because of the uh, <laughs> the uh, map that I've got as a reflection map there. Um, now, if I say set the rim lighting to red, as we increase the rim lighting, you can then see that sort of redness coming in at the rims. Quite nice for for sort of gold materials um, and a few other uh, few other ones um, you can then affect uh, you can also affect the index of refraction that's being used uh, given the nature of substance painter uh, and how one map is going to be powering your entire model even though it might be made up of loads of different types of surfaces that number's really more of a just one to, to play with and get an overall look. You're not going to have realistic um, IOR results throughout the texture just because of the nature of Substance Painter, but I wanted to put that in anyway. And the uh, naught degree reflect adjust, if I turn off metallic for a moment, um, let's give it a sort of dark color so we can see what's going on. There we go. Um, now, by default, even if I turn the roughness up to say that, Oh, maybe a little bit. Oh, no, that's the map. Sorry, my bad. Oh, no, that will work. Say 0.2. Now, this is using a Fresnel. So the middle isn't getting much reflection, and it, that, that scales out uh, to full reflection at the side, like any Fresnel does. Um, which is how the world works, apparently. <laughs> but uh, as an artist, you might want to really take, you, you want to exaggerate that for now effect and take away the front facing reflection. And that's what this allows you to do if you want to. You can increase that until uh, at max, there's no reflection at the, uh, at the center point and only on the, on the edges. Um, not strictly uh, real world uh, in terms of physically based rendering, but, um, it's a it's a nice artistic control to have should you need it. Down the right hand side here, obviously the main output that you use the majority of the time is the shader one. That's what's in there at the moment. Um, but there's another, uh, there's a, couple, a bunch of other ones I've put in just so you can see exactly what's going on with the different maps um, and make minor adjustments based from them. For example, if I uh, select the dielectric gloss one, that's showing you basically the Fresnel effect and showing you how that is affecting the uh, glossiness within the dielectric part of the shader. So if I then turn this value down, you see that turning to a kind of gray color. Um, the metallic rim does the same thing, but for the metallic shader. So if I go to, let's just say it's fully metallic at the moment, um, you've got your, your, your rim lighting uh, influence there. And as you lower the strength of the rim lighting, that will, that will uh, disappear until it's not there at all. So that's what they do. So now we've seen that, I'm going to jump over to a model that I took from BlendSwap by, uh, I think it's an artist called Papa Dragon. I'll, I'll definitely link it in the video below. Lovely model. Um, I, um, I 
unwrapped it, dumped it in Substance Painter and put on a quick material basically. Um, and I just want to show you uh, basically how this operates in a sort of real environment, I, in a working environment once you've got all your textures in place. Uh, one thing that's, uh, not two things actually that are important to know. Um, you'll notice it says OpenGL Normal Map. That's the type of export you want to use from Substance Painter. You, you get a couple of options. You can export as OpenGL. It will automatically give you a, a standard normal map, uh, and it will also give you a DirectX one. Now, the DirectX and the OpenGL ones, I found out, are actually a combination of the built-in normal map as well as the height map. Um, so you don't have to import either of those. If you just use OpenGL, um, that will incorporate the normal map and the height map, which is why that's the only option you've got here. Um, one thing to definitely remember is set all of the textures barring the base color to non-color data. Now, until recently, I didn't really understand that. I, I just knew you had to do it, but it's uh, recently been explained. I can't remember e even where it was on some video tutorial. Um, the Blender uses a built-in uh, linear workflow that so that you uh, don't have to muck around with, with increasing or decreasing gamma va values and stuff like that. You just bring in a texture and you use it, which is great. Um, but the problem is, when it's set to color data, it applies those gamma corrections to textures that you don't want gamma corrections applied to, like your normal map or your, your roughness map or anything other than color, basically. So when you set this to non-color uh, non data, you are telling it that you want Blender to leave it alone, to not do any um, of the uh, gamma corrections on it and just, just use the map as is. So that is why we set that to non-color data. If you don't, you will get some weird results, especially with the normal map. Um, it's very very obvious so make sure you select all of those as non-color data except the base color now that we've got an actual uh, setup here with textures in I'm going to demonstrate these in a bit more detail so you can see what they do let's turn on the roughness map so that's the effect the rough roughness map is having on our model the white areas are full roughness the black areas are no roughness whatsoever um, and that's a good time to show you what like the uh, the roughness adjust. Let's say you, you decide that it doesn't quite look how you want it to and you want it to be a bit less rough then just set this to 0 0.3 minus minus 0 0.3 sorry um, and you'll see there the, 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 it, it f fades a little bit. Same if you want to increase it uh, you can set it to say 0 0.3 and that will brighten it up but it will also brighten You see those black areas are now turn kind of a grey colour? It's because you're overriding it increasing the roughness adjust. The metallic does exactly the same thing. Um, if I jump over to the metallic view, white areas are using the metallic shader, black areas are using the dielectric sh shader, uh, and you can adjust those with the metallic adjust just like the roughness one. The ambient occlusion, um, you can see I'm using a little bit of it here. Um, that's also generated by Substance Painter, and you've got control over it via the AO strength here. So at zero, it doesn't apply any. At, uh, at one it applies all of it. You could uh, even go higher than that and, and type in two or whatever if you wanted to, but by default it will only use the uh, the, the, the zero to one because you, you, you're you not going to use that very often. Um, even that high, I, I typically go sort of 0 0.3, 0 0.4 at a max, but that's of course down to you. And that is pretty much all of it. The only other thing I wanted to show was the uh, the light bulb over there. Let's click on that. What I've done here is we're still using the Substance Painter shader, but we're also using a glass shader. Now that shader is available uh, free from my website as part of the PBR Nodes pack. Uh, the version two might not be on there yet, but the, it hasn't changed much from the uh, from the previous version. I'll, I'll be updating it to the the version two ones that I've made shortly. Um, and what I'm using is this mix, uh, this color ramp to decide which shader gets used at different parts, which is just basically the the base color um, fed into this and set up so the white areas are going to be using our Substance Painter shader and the black areas are going to use the, the gloss over there. And that's basically what does that. Obviously there's a lamp sitting behind there, that's what's creating the illumination. Um, and that is pretty much it. So I'll run a render now so we can see what the final result of this is. Um, and then we'll wrap up.
And there we go, the uh, the finished render. Um, overall, I'm really happy with how this uh, this no groups worked out. Um, with a little bit of compositing, uh, which I'm sure I've done actually. There we go. Um, you can quickly get a really nice result that looks nearly identical to to how it looked in in Substance Painter, um, without having to mess around for x amount of time. Um, trying to just trying to match up the uh, the look of the two separate rendering engines. So I hope you uh, you find this really useful. I do plan on um, continuing to develop this uh, node group, and anyone uh, who who has purchased it or does purchase it um, will get any future updates. Um, namely, I am, at the moment this is set up to work with the default. Um, metallic roughness workflow uh, that Substance Painter favours um, but it does now support others uh, there's a specular workflow um, uh, 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 I think a couple of others and, and depending on, on on feedback and what's needed um, if if that's a feature people want in this uh, it's, it's certainly something I will add um, so please do leave me some feedback uh, and I'll, I'll talk to you on the uh, on the comment section